Come on, guys. Little Ernest Cunningham pleaded. Don't go into Mr. Tillerman's field. There were five boys altogether, including Ernest. The others scoffed and wasted no time ducking under the rotted wood fence. The leader of the pack was a little boy with ginger hair and a speckled face named Richie Bridges. Cocksure, he scoffed a little Ernest. Too late, he said, gesturing to himself, to the others, and to the other side of the crippled fence. We're here, you coming? I think you'd be worse off if you didn't. Right, guys? The others chuckled. Ernest's face warmed with embarrassment. Yeah. If you don't come, then Farmer Tillerman's probably going to confuse you for one of his chickens. Or worse, remarked another of the boys, a round kid called Curtis Page, elbowing Richie in the side, hoping for his approval. He got it, and all four boys laughed. His need to no longer be embarrassed overcame his fear, and little Ernest Cunningham quickly rolled under the slanted 4 by 4s He received no welcome. Come on, Richie told them all, sweeping his hand through the air. Let's go find this pumpkin patch. And all the boys followed, cutting through the tall field of brown grass. They moved towards the woods beneath the fading sky. Think it's true? asked Curtis under his breath as they passed the first line of trees. <laughs> Of course it is, Richie said proudly. Why else would we be going? I've seen them before. No, you haven't, joked Dennis Palmer, pushing his glasses up onto his face. You don't have the balls. Oh, you want to see them? Richie asked, pulling his thumbs down in the front of his jeans. The others recoiled with disgusted chuckles. You know, I mean, I know Ernest does, but... Shut up, mumbled Ernest. Richie, Dennis, and Curtis all let it slide. The final boy, though, tall, skinny Leonard Wiggins, didn't. Don't pretend you're some little badass, he said, leaning down to look at Ernest in the eyes. You know, you're lucky we let you tag along, so you don't talk back. You shut up, and you just come along quietly. You got that? Ernest nodded, staring at the ground. Smiling, Richie and Leonard bumped fists. Good job, Richie mouthed. Leonard gave him a shrug that simply said, Don't mention it. Ernest trailed behind as the five wandered into the woods. Leaves crunching with every step, the boys all giggled and gossiped under their breaths. Is it even real? Dennis asked. Oh, but it is real, Leonard said. Every upperclassman's been there. Well, you know Joey from the football team? He told me it's true, and that he'd been there five times. He said it's no big deal, it's just a pumpkin patch. Okay, Dennis interjected, but if it's just a pumpkin patch, then why are we even going? It's gotta be more than that. Oh, you know what I mean. Leonard sneered. It's just a pumpkin patch, but they ain't just pumpkins. Right, Richie said, leading the bunch. They ain't. They're huge. They're the biggest pumpkins you ever saw. Nah, they're big because Mr. Tillerman uses a special fertilizer, Curtis said slyly. Or, so I hear. What does he use? Ernest piped up. All four boys in front of him stopped and they looked at each other with devilish glares. Richie shrugged, grinning at Ernest. People, probably. Not just people, Curtis said, shaking his head. Kids. Ernest was startled, and almost didn't even realize that the others had started moving again. In all seriousness, though, Ernest heard Dennis say, you don't actually think Mr. Tillerman grows them with people, do you? I mean, they can't grow like that. Probably not, Leonard scoffed. Well, I bet the old man started the rumor himself, though, you know? Just to scare people off. I mean, they're right behind his house, after all. Not that it worked then, did it? 
Curtis joked. Listen, old man Tillerman, don't start any rumors, Richie corrected them. He's never in town enough to start a rumor like that. He's got no time for that anymore. Only thing he's got time for is dying, and killing kids, probably. Ernest gulped. It couldn't be true. He knew that Mr. Tillerman was an old man. A bit scary looking, admittedly. But a killer? Never. Not in a million years. He was a friend of Ernest's mom. Mr. Tillerman owned the bean field out behind Ernest's house. He knew Ernest, and Ernest knew that Mr. Tillerman was a good man. Wasn't he? Anyway, Richie added, whether they grow from kids or not, who cares? I don't care. We just gotta grab one and bring it back. That's it. That's all we gotta do. Get in, get out, go home, and carve the best jack-o'-lanterns ever. He ain't never even gonna know we were out there. Continuing on their quest, the five made their way through the thick woods. Gray evening skies brought misty rains, and although Ernest felt miserable, he was too nervous to turn around. He was too embarrassed to do anything but follow the other boys. Sooner than Ernest would have liked, the woods opened up. They had made it to the edge of Mr. Tillerman's property. It was a quaint little house, with fading yellow paint and rusted bars around the back windows. There were pieces of farm equipment scattered about, an old barn that sat quite picturesquely on the far left side and an old white fence that stretched around the backyard. More importantly though, just a few dozen paces from the edge of the forest was a garden, a big ripe pumpkin patch filled with big ripe pumpkins. Score, Richie breathed, and even better, he pointed at Mr. Tillerman's old house. The lights are out, Hell, I don't think anyone's home. Curtains are closed tightly at the very least, Curtis encouraged. I think we're good. I don't feel good about this, Ernest said. Mr. Tillerman's a nice guy. No one paid him any mind. You guys ready? Richie asked, looking at everyone but Ernest. Remember, if Mr. Tillerman comes running out, bolt for the woods and meet back by the fence. Hopefully he'll only get Ernie right? All but Ernest agreed, and they snuck out of the woods and down towards the pumpkin patch. Ernest didn't want to follow them, but he didn't want to stay either. Weighing the two options, he decided it would be best to stay with them, as opposed to alone and unwatched in the quickly darkening woods. But once he reached the pumpkin patch with the others, he started to question his choice. In fact, they all did. Something was off. All the pumpkins in the pumpkin patch, sprouting from thick vines from darkened soil, had already been carved. They all had faces on them already. Their smiles seemed to glow. What the hell? Dennis asked Richie. Why the hell are they already carved, man? They shouldn't be, Curtis said, pointing out. They're still in the vine. Are they all carved? Looks like it, Ernest mumbled. You, know, you think old man Tillerman did this? Leonard asked. How? By pulling the guts out of the eyes? Richie asked, angered. I don't know. It's just about the only option though, ain't it? They didn't just grow like this. But what if they did? Ernest thought, suddenly looking at each pumpkin like it had been alive, grown from the ashes of the dead. Richie, unable to accept defeat, groaned and said, Listen, here he carved the damn things. It's less work for us. Just get in there, find the scariest one, and we'll take them home, right? Maybe we'll find one he hasn't carved up yet. You think he did it to try to scare us or something? Curtis asked. Are there candles inside? I mean, you guys see the glowing, right? <laughs> Who cares? Richie moaned. Look, just find a pumpkin, alright? They all, except for Ernest, 
tiptoed into the garden, eyeing from up high all the different pumpkins. Jeez, Dennis said. He did do it to all of them. Hell, I don't see a single one that isn't smiling back at me. This is weird, Curtis said cautiously. Ernest had stopped paying attention. He didn't like the situation. He didn't like Richie or the others. He didn't like being so close to Mr. Tillerman's house, whether he was a really bad man or not, and he certainly didn't like being that close to so many unnerving orange smiles. He couldn't bring himself to look into any of their hollow eyes. So, he looked to Mr. Tillerman's house, arms wrapped tightly around him, trying to warm himself. He noticed something different. A light had been turned on inside the old house. And Richie noticed this too. Hey, heads up guys, he whispered. The old man is home. Find a pumpkin and let's go. Ernest, waiting for the others, moved with a hunched back around the garden's perimeter. All the pumpkins looked different. All had dissimilar smiles. And he wondered, for a moment, if perhaps he could find the scariest one. And there was one he considered. A big one, that grew much larger than his own head. Larger than any of the pumpkins he'd ever seen. It had swooping angry eyes, slits for nostrils, and many, many fanged teeth. A fearsome pumpkin. It would have made for the most horrifying of jack-o'-lanterns. Ernest almost bent over, almost tried to pick it up. But he couldn't. His body wouldn't let him. Not because the pumpkin wasn't his. Not because he didn't want to join the others in their stupid game. But because every instinct in his brain told him, No. We shouldn't be out here. He mumbled, repeating himself louder. We shouldn't be out here. We should go now. Hey, listen, the chicken coop is over there, Richie said, pointing to the side of Mr. Tillerman's home. Go where you belong. Either grab a pumpkin with us, or don't even think about following us home. You could stay here with the pumpkins, and you could cry like the baby you are. Might as well just lay here in the middle of the patch and die. Really. It's what Mr. Tillerman will do to you anyways if he finds out. Ernest was willing to give in. To bow his head once more to Richie's cruelty. But at the sight of the grinning pumpkins, he shook his head, took a step back, and said no. I'll go up there, Ernest said, his voice shaking, pointing to Mr. Tillerman's house. I'll, I'll go and I'll tell him. I'll tell him what you're all doing, I swear. There was the faintest flicker of rage in Richie's eyes, the rage that someone like Ernest would ever defy him, but it was drowned out quickly by his overconfidence. He smiled. Well then do it. Go get yourself caught. We'd be long gone. <laughs> so eager to get yourself turned into pumpkin food, <laughs> Curtis laughed. I'm not. Ernest shouted. Keep it down, you dumbass, Leonard snarled. It's not true, Ernest said. Mr. Tillerman is, is a nice man, and we're stealing from him. We're just taking a few pumpkins, you numbskull, Richie said sternly. Now calm down, Ernie. No, you stop calling me Ernie, Ernest shouted, his voice cracking. Richie raised his hands, now very obviously concerned that they could get found out. Hey, calm down there, buddy, he said. Calm down, Ernest. <laughs> this kid ain't got the balls anyways, Dennis mocked. Yes, I do, Ernest said. Well, then do it, Leonard urged, nodding his head. Go, run, tell him. Go ahead and run, little chicken. No, Richie started holding up his finger. Wait, Ernest? Ernest couldn't control the tears that flowed from his eyes, but he could control his legs that wobbled beneath him. He made them strong, and he made them turn, and he ran to the house. Behind him, he heard an angered Richie bark, 
Ah, shit, Cunningham's rattling on us. Grab a pumpkin and go. Now, guys. Ernest didn't care. None had pursued him, as he feared they might, so he was free to sprint upwards and towards Mr. Tillerman's house. His legs were strong until he had almost reached the back door. What if they're right? Ernest wondered. He took much slower steps now, but still moved forward. He is old. He's scary looking. He stepped up to the back stairs, inching towards the door. He turned. The four in the field were bending down, getting ready to pick their pumpkins. He could still turn back. Those aren't normal pumpkins, though. With a deep, confident breath, Ernest turned and pounded on Mr. Tillerman's back door. Behind him, he heard Richie and the rest start to yell and curse, presumably at him, calling him awful, horrible names. They were shrieking like banshees. Mr. Tillerman? Little Ernest shouted, trying to rise above the commotion in the pumpkin patch. Mr. Tillerman, are you there? They're taking your pumpkins. It's me, Ernest. You know my mom. Mr. Tillerman? The doors swung open, and the prune-faced old man snarled down at Ernest. Now what are you doing here? I... I was just... Ernest stammered, immediately unsure of what to say. I just wanted to let you know there's a group of kids in your pumpkin patch. The old man cocked an eyebrow, looking over Ernest to the pumpkin patch. Ah, a group of kids, you say? Ernest nodded, unsure of whether or not he'd need to run. He couldn't turn his gaze from the old man. Nodding his head, Mr. Tillerman's snarl faded. Good. Good. It's about time. I was starting to wonder if this crop would ever bloom. Ernest, confused at what he meant, asked the old man. What? Well, I'm glad you stayed out of it though, little Cunningham, he said with a grin. It would have been difficult to explain to your mother. There was a noise behind Ernest that caught his attention. A large, swooping noise, like a tree felled by the wind. Was it? Before he could turn around, Mr. Tillerman had grabbed a hold of Ernest's shoulders and made sure he couldn't turn around. Now you just don't worry about it, he told the boy. Come, you know, come on inside and let's get you something to drink and we'll get you warmed up. As the noises, the crunching noises continued in the distance. A fearful Ernest entered Mr. Tillerman's old house. Before shutting the door, Mr. Tillerman surveyed his pumpkin patch. The shifting, feasting pumpkins were making quick and rather quiet work of the boys, chewing and devouring them. Their vines whipped through the air, snapping to and coiling around what remained of the children like striking pythons. He grinned. Yes, he said, as something rose from within the field, bursting from within the pumpkins. I was really worried for a bit, but I think they're going to be just fine now. <laughs>